I've got new agents that came in, they didn't sell anything for six months, and then their second six months, they closed 20 deals. So many agents with that story. I could tell you several agents with that story. I've got into come in and they sell 20 properties in the first six months. Everybody has a different layout of, of their journey and how everything comes together. Um, everybody's doing open houses and social media and, and running ads and direct mail and all this stuff. And I'm saying all that stuff leads to the same thing, just talking to people. And what I'm saying is, is screw all that stuff. I got this hack for you over here, guys. For two cents, we can talk to any property or anyone on our market. Why don't we just go ahead and have the conversations with them right now? Screw all this you know, foreplay. Let's just go straight to the source and make it happen. Right? It's the greatest hack in the history of real estate. Two cents, call the property owner, right? You get a 10% pickup rate, so that's 20 cents. Every 20 cents, you're talking to a property owner that owns the exact property you wanna sell. Just to make friends, not to sell them, not to ask if he wants to sell, and all that bullshit that all these other coaches are selling, no. Just to ask them how they're doing, see how their day is, see if, you know, let them know a property sold in their market and their, their subdivision. See if there's something we can do to help them. We're an agent. Can we offer our services to you? Right? Do you have an agent you might work with? Let's do, let's do some business, man. Let's stay in touch. You know, what's a good email? Cool, I'll stay in touch, right? It, it's just, guys, like I said, am I some kind of superhero? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like it, you know, when I talk to agents and stuff, it's like, man, this is so, so simple. People are spending like thousands of dollars on Zillow and like spending all this money, like even giving money to coaches and stuff. I'm like, that's crazy that you paid a coach $3,000 for anything. I can't believe you paid them $2. It's nuts. Uh, everybody looks at when you lose everything as being this really weird, dark place or whatever. It wasn't for me. I got up and if I lose everything today, tomorrow is gonna to be no different. I don't care if I'm living in a cardboard box. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna learn, try to learn something, and I'm gonna to try to adapt and apply, and I'm gonna be thinking about three to five years out. It's the same thing. Listen, guys, when they're flipping into another house, okay, the prices are high here, okay, and if they buy, if they sell now for a high price, they're gonna buy at a high price. Right, and if they wait till it comes down, they're going to sell at a lower price, but they're also going to buy at a lower price. So it doesn't matter when they buy and sell. Right, it doesn't matter if they're if they're going to flip right into another property. It doesn't matter when they do it because they're going to you know if they're going to lose equity on the house that they're in now, if they can buy high right now, they could just trade and buy high because they know it's going to go down. Well, you, they would have lost equity in the house they're in now when it goes down. So it doesn't really matter when they do it if they're flipping into another house. Right, if the market's up or down. The only time where that can make sense is if they sell now and then rent somewhere or live with mom until the market goes down and then buy. You know, sell at the top and then buy at the bottom. That's the only time that that could really make sense. You know what I mean? Where they can really work the market to like sell at the highest and, and, and buy at the lowest kind of deal. But what's the chances? I mean, you're gonna spend so much money on rent waiting for that moment to happen. So you're gonna lose there. And you definitely don't wanna go live with mom for a year. So that's not gonna ha happen. So the best scenario is for them just to stay put and wait for inventory to go up. Sure, prices may come down a little bit, but they're gonna have their pick amongst so many houses you know, and they can actually choose the one that they love instead of settling for one they might not like as much and paying an exaggerated price for it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. What you're talking about is a client. See, those are, the, those are the clients you need to stack up right now. You need to have so many of those clients getting your weekly email and knowing that you're here to help them whenever they need something. For when the market flips, they're gonna start calling you. Those clients are gonna start calling you saying, listen, I'm seeing all kinds of houses on the market. I'm ready to go. You know, let's sell what we got and I wanna buy this one. You know, those, those aren't necessarily clients today, the people you're talking about. Your agreement means nothing, right? Like we can, we can tear that thing up right now and throw it in the garbage. It doesn't matter to me. I put in every listing agreement, seller can cancel this agreement at any time for any reason, 
right? I don't care if they sell or not. I'm just here to help them do what they want to do. All right, I'm not trying to, okay, get you under contract and now, okay, hurry up and force you into selling and all that stuff. That's not my style. What I would do is, is I want to establish a game plan like you're saying. It's like, listen, I understand you don't want to move right this second, but just give me the timeline of what you are looking at. You know, like, give me, like, let's work together here. You know, let's, do you want to work together? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to work together? Um, if not, then we can just tear this agreement up and we can go our separate ways. But I'd like to work with you here if you could work with me. You know, what you, what are your, what's your plans here? What's your timeline of events? And try to establish like a timeline and a game plan with them. You know what I mean? Right? And so like the script that I've come up with is so deep. There's so many levels to it. It's not just some words on a paper. It's like it's all set up for a reason to, to knock it out the park and make it sound very organic, you know what I mean? Because we're using the first part of three questions to really um, hear, hear and collect data from a prospect to see which direction we need to go with the, uh, with the phone call. So I think you just need to learn how to stick those transitions and those awkward moments, right? And uh, learn how to listen to your prospect, you know, on every angle, how they're breathing, how fast they're talking, the whole nine yards, what they're saying. Right, and then just kind of think about all that and put it all together and then just practice, 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 practice. You know why you don't have to worry about expectations of them listing with you? Because closings are happening and will happen every day for the rest of your life in your market by the truckloads, no matter what the market does. If you go back to dot com, 9-11, 2008, the pandemic, closings happened every single day by the truckloads during the worst moments in the market. The market is the most resilient thing out there. Nothing's gonna stop it. There's, it's just, the market is gonna produce, a, and every closing represents two opportunities, a buyer and a seller. So multiply the closings every day by two, and that's how many opportunities are happening in a daily, on a daily basis in your market. Um, it's, it's staggering if you really step back and look in your MLS and look at the numbers of closings during last year, during the 45 day complete shutdown, 80% of the same amount of closings and new pending deals. If you look at 2008, all those years of the worst real estate market ever, how many closings were actually happening by the truckloads during that time, um, it's, it's quite remarkable. So when you're, when you're in this industry where there's a, just a pre like there's unlimited business, unlimited limited business um, you can you can rest assured that I mean even as a new agent you can walk in there with so much confidence that listen it's okay mister you can even tell the seller listen it's okay if you guys don't choose me <laughs> you can tell the seller listen guys you know I'm the I'm the best option I can tell you that and I'm gonna work the hardest but if you guys don't choose me it's okay right I'm gonna go find five more people who want a hard worker who's going to take care of them so, it, you know, whatever you guys choose, just trust me. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to continue working hard to help more people because I know one thing. Closings are going to happen every day, so there's an unlimited amount of business for me, and I'm going to go get mine, whether you do a list with me or not, right? So that, that, that's another, like, part of it is that, okay, yeah, sure, we don't have any expectations because we're literally trying to generally help them. But on the flip side, the re one big reason why we can do that and still know that we're going to win in the end is because we know that there's an unlimited amount of business and it's never going to end. Because every, every activity comes right back to the phone, and the phone is the common denominator of all closing. So for me, I'm like, if I really want to ramp my business up, then I'm gonna just do the activity that causes closings to happen, which is the calls. That's why I'm so hard on that, that one activity, guys. But you know, really, for me, if I can get into a routine, especially as a new agent, if I can get into a routine where I'm doing my calls between nine and 12 every day, and in the afternoon, I can do some social media, I can do my weekly email, I can do some research, I can work on my website, I can do some handwritten letters, I can do door knocking and open houses. If I, if I, can, if I can carve out and be disciplined enough to make my calls from nine to 12 every day, and then do all these other little things in the afternoon, you know, that I'm going to crush it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So I think the biggest thing is, is to get into a routine, love a routine, love the process. Listen, it's going to get boring. 
you know, after like three weeks and three months and nine months of making calls and doing all this stuff repetitively over and over again, gets boring. But I'm telling you, if you do it for four years straight, you make five new friends or property owners every day, you do the weekly email, you're gonna be one of the top real estate agents in your area within that four years. No doubt about it. It is 100% facts. The problem is people can't hang in there that long. It's all simple stuff. Don't overcomplicate it. That's the biggest thing. It's just keep it simple. Talk to people. Get the name, get your name out there. So that we're gonna push, push, push as we get to the part of the of our of the process where we are getting out of the uh, training stage where we've allocated 50%, 50%, right? But then the, the training starts to dwindle and we've taken care of a lot of that. Okay, we're gonna cut that back to 10% training, right? 10, something like that percent training. And we're gonna pr replace that other 40% with marketing. After like two or three weeks, then you've got your training behind you. You've been making calls the whole time. You're trying to build a business. You're following up with people. You're finding people that might wanna buy or sell. You're collecting data. You're collecting data. Now we're gonna get into some marketing. Now that we have a little momentum, right? We have some prospects that might do stuff. We got a little momentum. We're following up, we're showing property, we're going to listing appointments, we're doing things. Now we wanna get into a little bit of marketing, which is gonna involve social media, which is gonna involve doing our weekly email. This is one thing with new agents. I don't necessarily want you to start the weekly email day one. Right, I would want you to, because to, I don't want that pressure on you. You know, for me, a lot of my new agents, I, I don't want you to start your weekly email till month two, month three, something like that. You know, just so that we can get a lot of this initial lump of training behind us and take a lot of that pressure off. Because if you start your weekly email, that's something we're never gonna stop doing. So if you do it, if you start it, that means we're gonna do it every Wednesday for the rest of your life. So if we're doing it every Wednesday for the rest of our life, you know, once we start, it's like there's no need to get in a hurry there because once we start it, we're never gonna stop it. So take your time with this stuff, guys. We don't have to do everything in one day. All right, so the process there, I hope you guys understand what the first one, two, three months look like. Once we get to the part of the process where we are allocating some time towards marketing, all right, this is where things are gonna get, get really fun because now we're combining real conversation with some real marketing through social media, through our, our weekly emails, you know, through maybe direct mail, maybe, I don't know what all you're gonna do marketing wise, but there's two things we definitely need to do, email and social media. The entire foundation of your personal brand needs to be your weekly email. And then we're gonna sprinkle social media on top of the weekly email. Right, so I've got agents who, like I have one agent, he didn't sell, it, 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 I'll end with this and then take some questions. It, everybody's process, everybody's journey is different. I've got new agents that came in, they didn't sell anything for six months, and then their second six months, they closed 20 deals. So many agents with that story. I could tell you several agents with that story. I've got agents who come in and they sell 20 properties in their first six months. Everybody has a different layout of, of their journey and how everything comes together, um, just based on you know confidence and uh, you know adaptability.